Hello, Jim Schwimmer here. Welcome to today's vlog. Before we get to the main subject for today, there's another subject we have to cover, a news report that I want to share that I don't think the mainstream, so-called mainstream media is going to cover very much. So you have to get it from me. That's why you should be watching these vlogs. Go right to the headline. Secret report. How CIA's Brennan overruled dissenting analysts who concluded Russia favored Hillary. As you know, the conventional, well, I won't say conventional wisdom, but the claims, the story that keeps getting put forth by the Democrats and their friends in the media, which is just about the entire media, they keep on with this narrative that the Russians wanted Trump to win in 2016, and they are now talking about 2020, and they keep talking about Russia, 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 never mind China and Iran, which we both know for sure favor Biden. But it looks like in 2016, the Russians favored Clinton or may have. Former CIA director John Brennan personally edited a crucial section of the intelligence report on Russian interference in the 2016 election and assigned a political ally to take a lead role in writing it after career analysts disputed Brennan's take that Russian leader Vladimir Putin intervened in the 2016 election to help Donald Trump clinch the White House, according to two senior U.S. intelligence officials who have seen classified materials detailing Brennan's role in drafting the document. The explosive conclusion Brennan inserted into the report was used to help justify continuing the Trump-Russia quote, collusion, unquote, investigation, which had been launched by the FBI in 2016. It was picked up after the election by special counsel Robert Mueller, who in the end found no proof that Trump or his campaign conspired with Moscow. The dissenting analysts found that Moscow preferred Clinton because it judged she would work with its leaders, whereas it worried Trump would be too unpredictable. As Secretary of State, Clinton tried to, quote, reset, unquote, relations with Moscow to move them to a more positive and cooperative stage, while Trump campaigned on expanding the U.S. military, which Moscow perceived as a threat. And this is something that I said in an earlier vlog going way back, that this whole Russia wanting Trump to win in 2016, it really didn't make sense to me because Hillary was the one with the reset button, reaching out to the Russians when she was Secretary of State, advocating forming a whole new relationship. That was Hillary. It just seemed logical to me that the Russians would prefer Hillary because how could they know what Trump would do? I mean, there are Americans today, including sometimes even myself, who don't know what Trump is going to do from day to day, can't predict what he's going to do. So I would imagine the problem would have been and is even harder for the Russians. So I am not surprised by these dissenting analysts' opinions at all, nor am I surprised that John Brennan suppressed the information and had a political ally, a political ally who contributed to the Hillary Clinton campaign, write the final report. But let me get back to quoting from the article. Quote, they complained, these would be the analysts, the two dissenting analysts, quote, they complained Brennan took a thesis that Putin supported Trump and decided he was going to ignore dissenting data and exaggerate the importance of that conclusion, even though they said it didn't have any real substance behind it, unquote, said a senior U.S. intelligence official who participated in a 2018 review of the spycraft behind the assessment, which President Obama ordered after the 2016 election. In other words, after it was known that Trump had won and 
the country was in the transition period. He, he being again the senior U.S. intelligence official, he elaborated that the analysts said that they also came under political pressure to back Brennan's judgment that Putin personally ordered, quote, active measures, unquote, against the Clinton campaign to throw the election to Trump, even though the underlying intelligence was, quote, weak, unquote. Durham, that would be John Durham. We all know who John Durham is by now, I hope, so I'm not going to go into detail about Durham. Durham is said to be using the long hidden report, which runs 50 plus pages, as a roadmap in his investigation of whether the Obama administration politicized intelligence while targeting the Trump campaign and presidential transition in an unprecedented investigation involving white tapping and other secret surveillance. So again, we're back to waiting to hear from John Durham what he's going to come up with. But obviously, or apparently from this article, Durham is on to this possibility too, that Brennan deliberately manipulated a report to make it say something that it didn't. As I've said in the past, stay tuned. We're all waiting for John Durham. I hope we will hear from him soon. Now to today's main subject, which touches on something I've mentioned in earlier vlogs, which is that we are seeing groups coming out to support Trump who have never or had in only very small numbers express support for any Republican, actually. But Trump is making inroads, as I've said in the past. It's pretty clear by now. He's been making inroads among black voters, a number of whom spoke at the Republican National Convention. He's also been making inroads among Hispanics. And now, this is very interesting. Here's this headline. Gay Palestinian American man comes out swinging for Donald Trump. Hazem Faraj, a former Muslim and Palestinian American whose family abandoned him when he became a Christian as a teenager, came out supporting Donald Trump ahead of the November 3rd elections. Quote, as an American citizen, I have hope because someone like Trump sits in the Oval Office. Unquote. He claimed in a video shared on Twitter by Richard Grinnell, former U.S. ambassador to Germany and former acting U.S. Director of National Intelligence, who was the first openly gay member of a presidential cabinet. And now I'm going to go right to the video. You can hear from Hazem Faraj. It's about a three minute, three and a half minute video, but it really is worth watching and listening to the whole thing. So watch. As a proud American of Middle Eastern heritage, it is clear Donald Trump is the right leader to bring peace to a war-torn Middle East. I'm the son of Palestinian Arab immigrants to the United States. My name is Hazem Faraj, and I'm outspoken. As an investigative journalist for 20 years, I reported on and saw firsthand the heart of all of this chaos. I built a career as a reporter exposing Islamic extremism and the victims in its path. Two weeks after ISIS attacked Mount Sinjar in 2014, I took my camera and left for Iraq. It was a tangled web of chaos, human rights abuses, war crimes against humanity, and so much pain, heartache, and bloodshed. Donald Trump is the only candidate who will create the possibility for change in the Middle East. Many of my Muslim friends and I know and we're secretly thankful for his leadership. Through his policies for peace in the Middle East, he is allowing freedom to flourish. In just three years, Trump has completely crushed ISIS. He's bringing home the troops from over there just like he promised. He took out two of the region's most brutal terrorists, ISIS leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi and Iranian General Qasem Soleimani, who was responsible for the death of 600 American troops. The Obama administration, on the other hand, secretly sent 400 million in cash to Soleimani's government. At the same time, those leaders were openly chanting death to America 
As an American citizen and an advocate for a peaceful transition out of the Middle East, I have hope because someone like Trump sits in the Oval Office. I know terrorists fear him. That's why I support him. When Obama Biden was in office, terrorism spread so quickly. And it was because the bad guys took advantage of the weak policies of Obama and Biden. The disastrous nuclear deal with Iran that Obama signed and that Biden wants to return to, it will make us less safe. This deal all but guarantees a nuclear Iran, and that's an existential threat to the people of Israel and the West Bank. You may think it's strange to hear a Palestinian voice concern for Israelis, but the truth is, peace between Israel and the Palestinians is possible. In January, Donald Trump's administration unveiled a plan that would give rise to a better future for the Palestinians. And in doing so, he laid bare the reality that Palestinian leaders themselves don't want peace. They want power. And the truth is, Trump values the lives of Palestinians more than the leaders do themselves, more than Hamas and more than Fatah. In September 2019, the Trump administration also, and it was announced earlier, it went to the UN, its global initiative to decriminalize homosexuality in 69 nations, many of them Islamic nations, and still make same-sex relations a crime, including nine countries where it is punishable by actual death. Obama-Biden were in office for eight years. Why didn't they think of that when they were in office? Instead, they gave billions of cash to this regime. The regime that murders people, imprisons gays, and throws them off the rooftops. Even here in America, Islam's most evil practices have taken root. Female genital mutilation, child brides, terrorism, and terrorist attacks like the Pulse nightclub massacre. It left 49 LGBTs and their friends murdered in cold blood. I'm no bigot, nor is Donald Trump. He doesn't see race, color, religion, or sexuality. And I know that firsthand, because I'm gay. My name is Hazem Faraj, and I'm outspoken. Welcome back. That's it for today. As always, thank you, thank you, thank you for spending time with me, for watching my video. I really appreciate it. If you could also give me a thumbs up, that would really be great. If you like this video, share it with anybody you think would also like the video. Any comments, there's a comment section below the video where you can also put questions, suggestions for future topics. You can also subscribe. I love getting new subscribers. But most of all, come back and see me again. I look forward to seeing all of you again. And until I do see you all again, Bye. Christy Nome, Governor of South Dakota. This is how we do social distancing in our state. That was great. Plus COVID, more hunting. That's the plan for the future.